Well, hello, hello, hello to all of the residents of this beautiful province of ours of Gauteng on what is a chilly Thursday evening, the 25th of June. That means for some of the residents of Gauteng, today is, pe is payday, which is a great day for any of us who have, uh, have, been, who have earned our incomes today, particularly in what is this extended lockdown period that we find ourselves. This is the third in what has been a series of conversation around public participation in the budget process of the legislature for Gauteng, which is the Gauteng legislature, your view, our vision. Joining me in our conversation today is Me Rebecca Paladi de Camela, who is with the health portfolio, Ndate Matume Chilwane, who is with education, Ndate William Macheke, who is with sports, recreation, arts, and culture, as well as Ndate Mapiti Matsena, who looks after community safety. Gentlemen and lady, welcome to the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Vosie. What I'm going to do is to approach the conversation the way we have done these conversations over the past little while. And that's really with a relaxed tone. What we're, what we're trying to do with these is to maximize residents' participation in the Gauteng Provincial Legislature process. Some, like myself, were fairly new to how these conversations go. And so over the past couple of these, I've spent a lot of time being educated and learning about how the Gauteng province works, about the role of the legislature, and about what are the ambitions of the Gauteng province and the legislature as it pertains to delivery for the public. Today, of course, continues our theme, which is this webinar series with ourselves and Mail and Guardian. And our theme really has been around Gauteng Provincial Legislature and its ability to provide oversight on the work of the Gauteng Provincial but, uh, uh, Government and how it spends its budget. Very important conversation piece. Now, let's get going, I think, by setting the scene just a little bit. Over the past day or two, the people um, and the GLAD participants who've joined us on these have looked at the issues that our province is facing and given ideas and thoughts around what our province needs to do to address some of those issues. So before we get into the substantive issues of today, what I'd like to do is to start at a very high level with thoughts from each of you about where the problem finds itself and what we can do as residents to engage ourselves on the issues of the province. And so with your permission, I'd like to just get your general thoughts around where the country finds itself today. Uh, Dr. Chilwane, I'd like to start with your comment first, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vos. Um, I think uh, for starters, we find ourselves in a situation uh, that is not for, from our own choosing, mm. but we have to find a way of navigating through those uh, uncharted uh, terrain. Uh, and indeed, the, the, the pandemic has brought uh, an opportunity and also has brought quite a number of new challenges. I mean, considering how the South African economy for one has been performing over the past few, few years. I mean, we're already, I don't want to use the word a sinking ship. We're not sinking, um, but really we find ourselves in very difficult waters. And uh, with, the, with the pandemic, we will find ourselves in even more trouble. But uh, mm -hmm. fortunately, with the social contract in place between government and the ruling party and the people of South Africa working together, mm -hmm. uh, I can comfortably assume that we will pull through. But it will require all of us to put our hands on deck. Um, mm -hmm. The one man show or a, an expectation from government to do it all and be all. I think uh, the time has come for South Africans to really come together and work mm. together to get ourselves in what we find ourselves in. 
Thank you very much for those thoughts. Um, and if I could now ask you, um, Dr. Macheka, first to unmute yourself and then to give us your thoughts around what you think around as it pertains to where the province finds itself. No, thank you, Vosi, and uh, good evening to those who have tuned in as well. Um, I will take from where Chairperson Matume could have indicated. It has been a very difficult uh, period for all of us. It has been plus minus 100 days of uh, hell for, for most people. Mm. Uh, the level of, uh, we, we've seen uh, with this national uh, uh, disaster that was declared by the president, it has shown the level of uh, poverty amongst mm. our people. Mm. Um, it's one area that uh, really moving forward, uh, we really need to zoom in as the ruling party mm. and change the living conditions of our people. It can, be, it can be normal uh, that when the, uh, our people are really dependent on social relief. Uh, um, much as we are in that uh, national, we are, we are faced with a very difficult situation in terms of the fiscal. But it's high time that we need to really create uh, uh, through infrastructure and a number of um, activities that can really. Um, move us towards a, a, a socio-economic uh, environment that the majority of our people can really enjoy. Um, we, we, we can safely say um, it has been difficult, but we know that we'll pass this uh, stage and uh, we'll overcome. Uh, we must just uh, continue to adhere to the regulations um, as said by the level three regulations, uh, but hope that um, moving forward we can be able to overcome. Yeah, maybe it, um, it's just my opinion remarks just to, to add to what uh, Chairman Madonna could have indicated. Thank you, sir. We appreciate those thoughts. Uh, Kamela, if we could get your thoughts, please, around what you think in terms of where the province finds itself and how we as residents can be better engaged. Yeah, uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to say to talk about where the province is finding itself. Mm. I think the province is uh, ready to attend to its own residents because of the issues that are facing us as the leadership of the province. We are ready to interact with our people we are ready to ensure that our people are safe. As we are finding ourselves currently under this lockdown, lockdown that is facing us, it is very important for our people to also work together with government to ensure that we reduce the rates of infections that are going on. We are mm. observing a lot of people moving around without adhering to the rules and regulations that are created for us for safety in terms of health. Our mm. plea to our people is to ensure that we all look after ourselves, stay home, wherever we need to move home, out of our homes, we must go out if there is a particular need that is required. But strolling around is not the right thing to do. So as a province, we are, we are requesting our people to stay home and apply the rules that are there for the safety of our people. Thank mm. you. Thank you, ma'am, for those thoughts. And thank you, all of you, or each of you rather, for those opening remarks. I note um, that um, we seem to have lost in our, uh, our conversation, Ndata Matsena, we'll wait for him as we continue with our conversations. And as soon as he requests to come back, I suspect it has to do with um, uh, the connection. But as soon as he requests to come back, we'll invite him back. With your permission, I'd like to start first in what is probably South Africa's most tenuous issue today, education. Now, we do know as at current, that in particular, when it comes to the question around education, this uh, committee noted that, on the 20, that for the 2020 and 2021 financial year, 
the department received funds from both the national and provincial revenue funds in form of an equitable share as well as conditional grants. Now, for the citizens who joined us in this conversation, the Gauteng Department of Education has received an allocation of 51 billion in equitable share, and they spent two and a half billion in conditional grants. This is for the 2020 and 2021 financial years. So that's a 95% to 5% split in what makes up a 53.5 billion rand budget. For those who are interested, the budget in the prior year was 49.8 billion. So this sees a 7.6% increase in the budget by the province. The committee has also noted that all departmental programs received a budget increase for the successful implementation of the mandate. And the first place I want to start is to test this conversation around the successful implementation of the mandate. Because there are a couple of questions we need to ask ourselves. The mandate has centered around the quality of education, a conducive learning environment, transforming public schooling by addressing barriers to access, equity and redress, and increasing access to quality pre and post school education opportunities. But among these, perhaps the least spoken about is that the budget needed to talk around the eradication of the backlog of the asbestos infrastructure, as well as improving sanitation. Now, this is quite an intro into this conversation piece, but I do think it's material. So I want to start first with you, Ndate Chilwan, because this is one of the mandates amongst which you are charged. How are we doing as a province insofar as executing this mandate of delivery of quality education to the residents? And how are we doing insofar as ensuring equity, redress, and eradicating this asbestos backlog? If you could unmute yourself, sir. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, indeed. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, let me start with the success. Uh, uh, we, 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 we reported a, a 97% expenditure in the previous financial year. And, and uh, in that, that was largely because uh, we, out of the, the 44, uh, projected uh, uh, targets, uh, over 30, 33 of them were achieved. And uh, that correctly was aligned with the, with the finance. So, but what are these outcomes that uh, we generally are targeting? The first outcome is the rollout for early childhood development. Mm. The second one, the second one is the safe, safe space for learners. Thirdly, you are looking at uh, 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 the, the education space. What do I mean? Meaning that the linkage of, the of utilizing uh, ICT, if I can use that word, in education, in the learner environment, the learning and teaching environment. And fourthly, obviously, the infrastructure issue. The infrastructure matter is a very it's a very it's 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 it's, it's an area it's a thorny space an issue in the, in general in the department uh, uh, especially in our province um, uh, with the committee was uh, was 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 very clear when it rose, when it raised that issue that mm. uh, the backlog is increasing and it's the truth mm. uh, the issue of asbestos there was targets in place but they've been shifting. Uh, there's quite there's, there are not many. It's not, uh, there's about few that are left, but they are still there. They are, they're still there. That's best of schools, and uh, the, the sanitation, the backlog also is quite uh, it's it's there as well. So, in the main, what the issue that the committee raised was that uh, the current model of uh, infrastructure, which uh, 
that Demodise was here yesterday mm. uh, to present mm. and uh, education. The current model has not been, it maybe it was effective then, mm. but it's not effective now. Mm. Uh, mm. And, and hence mm -hmm. the backlog keeps on piling. But uh, the only thorny part, well, on our budget is that there's, a, there's been a reduction on the infrastructure allocation. But everywhere else has seen substantial increase because of the success. But on the infrastructure component is the only area where the budget dropped. And uh, it has been dropping for quite some time. And that's mainly in line with the inability to implement or utilize the budget. So that is the only thorny area. But overall, in, in terms of providing education in, in Gauteng, we, we have done well. Uh, despite us not being number one again, but being number two. But if you look at the learner ratio uh, between our province and the uh, and, uh, 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 free state, you realize free state is only looking at uh, 18,000 matriculants, while we are sitting at almost 200,000. Mm. You know, and to get that uh, success of 87%, it shows you how organized, how effective the systems are in the department. And uh, so overall, we are happy with, we've been happy, and we're very happy with the progress thus far. Um, we're happy with the progress thus far in terms of the implementation and and really the the budget uh, might sound big but uh, the lion's share of it goes into providing uh, education i mean about when i speak about lion's share i'm talking about 39.9 uh, billion of that 53.3 billion goes to providing public ordinary school education that goes into the basic that's the main main one that goes to what uh, transpires in education. That includes school nutrition, that includes scholar transport, that includes uh, 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 educated public ordinary schooling education, everything goes there. So the majority of that budget really is committed and, 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 and we're happy because with the above inflation increase, because it talks to uh, the balancing. Because if you were getting less than inflation, you realize that over a period of time will then end up being mm -hmm. unable to really provide what we've been able to provide. Uh, so I think with with that, uh, uh, yeah, we should be able to have covered some of the, yeah. Indeed, thank you. I, I would like to get um, uh, your thoughts um, on this, uh, because a part of the delivery um, as it pertains to education, um, and I'm aware that you are in particular charged with the health portfolio, but a part of that delivery, isn't it, has also to do with sanitation. So maybe just if you could for us give us a sense around where the province is in terms of its delivery from its health um, mandate as well as its health goals. It seems that you're muted, ma'am. If you could just unmute yourself. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of health, uh, the budget now is 55.7 billion. The previous budget, we the department executed 98% of the budget. And the model that is being used by the legislature state that if you spend 98% of your budget, it means the department is doing better. So the department is having various programs. They, there are eight programs which are being addressed by this budget. With regard to primary health care, that is where a lot of budget of money is spent to ensure that our people understand where to access health all the time. So every member of the community should be able to visit their local uh, facility when they are experiencing health problem. However, a lot of some of most of our people they will find themselves in the next level of care, and that is not what the department is interested in because you need to be first assessed at the lower level 
and then you mm -hmm. are transferred to the higher level to get specialist care, which is available in the province. So mm -hmm. this budget is addressing uh, programs and sub-programs, the issues of TB, the issues of HIV and AIDS, and the issues of mother and child. There are many issues that, the, that this budget is covering. And mm -hmm. since it was 98% that was spent in the previous day, previous year, we are striving, the department is striving to spend all its budget so that it continuously achieve a clean audit as it is addressing the challenges that are facing our people. There are targets that are placed, that are being addressed by this budget. At least 54 of these targets were achieved. It means this budget is used effectively to address the issues that are facing the people in this province. So we also encourage people to raise issues with us where they exist, because you must remember this province is having 15 million and more of people. And this number is bigger than any other area in our province. So everybody goes to our facilities. I know there is often issues where people are complaining about type of care they are receiving, but often, if you find people flocking into facilities almost every day and there is a lot of uh, queues and everything, it means they are getting something, although there will be challenges. So for mm. us, I th we think this budget is sufficient and it will be reviewed as we are pro pro progressing. If there is a need, we will shout and get some more to address the issues. But we really are encouraging primary health care where our people are uh, attending to uh, attending the lower level before they go to the higher level of care. Thank you. Mm. Matt, if I can just stick with you for a little bit with a follow on question there, because one of the challenges, as you are aware, is, of course, this coronavirus that we're dealing with, which by my estimation, I don't have any scientific evidence to prove this, but there's a part of me that thinks that it's going to have a disproportionate effect on the Gauteng province, purely because it is the economic hub of our, of our, of our country. In fact, it's the economic hub of the continent, if we're completely honest. The truth as well yes. met, isn't it, is that the province attracts migrant labor from the other parts of sub-Saharan Africa. So the Gauteng province is home, not only to native people of Gauteng, but also to other uh, 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 citizens of South Africa, and by extension, other citizens in particular, but not exclusively, of SADC. And one of the main resources that has strained puts on it is the health sector. In your view, how do we make sure that we achieve a good quality of delivery in terms of the health services that the members of the public are demanding, as well as achieving a culture of service in terms of how the services are being delivered? What do you do? What do you think could be done to improve both the quality of the of the health being delivered as well as an attitude of an, and a culture of service in the department? Yeah, I think um, with regard to quality services, uh, mm -hmm. the outcomes are showing that the department is delivering quality health care to the residents of Gauteng. I mm. only mentioned 15 million residents, but you must be aware that uh, health is accessible by whoever finds themselves in the country. We cannot deny anyone who is here, who is in the country. I know there is an estimation of more than 2 million of people from Zimbabwe in the country, meaning the total number is 15 million of those who are counted, but the un unaccounted population are also there. And I know the country is also trying to negotiate with external uh, countries so that they can pay for their people because there is many people in the country. But the quality of services is very is highly there because if the statistics were to be, if I knew I could have brought the statistics to show that really mm -hmm. there is something good that the department is doing in Gauteng. So mm -hmm. when you go to studies, uh, patient satisfaction, patients are not complaining about uh, if you didn't give me medication, they want to be treated with respect with good care. So mm. we need to improve on the attitudes 
of the healthcare workers. But it doesn't mean all healthcare workers are having bad attitude. There will be element of burnout when a person yeah. has to care for more people. The expectation is that when you go to the clinic, one registered nurse must care for at least 35 people per day. But sure. you find that there are more than more people, more than 60 people, and you must maintain the smile. At times, it's not easy to do that. But we are not encouraging our healthcare workers to display an cultured and unwanted type of behavior towards our people. So in terms of the budget, there is also an increase in terms of human resources so that we attract more people to come and do work. Coronavirus or lockdown also has shown us that we can do things better. The model that is being used currently to address the issues of corona is something that we will propose as a committee to mm. the department to use because now everybody in South Africa, they know there is corona. But not everybody will tell you about the total statistics of the people suffering from diabetes or TB. So this mm. model is also a learning curve for us as the people of Gauteng that we will thinking of implementing it so that people can now start to know what other conditions are there on daily basis. You can ask a young person in the street, they will tell you, I must sanitize, I must put on a mask. I must do this and that in relation to corona. But with other conditions, the information is silent. So we are not happy because of corona, but at the same time, it has exposed things that can be done better. Thank you. I love that. And I love the idea that we're learning from a crisis because I think a, a big part of the learnings is also coming around how we're using technology to track, to monitor, to administer, isn't it, uh, public good and public service. Before I let you go, and I want to move on, um, I, I would be remiss in my duties as a moderator if I didn't ask the question, how ready are we for NHI as a province? Uh, with regard to NHI, we were moving and we were moving uh, speedily. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, like I think in February, we were the government parliament portfolio committee was doing public participations within our province. I think it was done in February, that weekend of the last weekend of February. People mm. are ready and waiting for national health insurance because health is a right for everybody, irrespective of financial standing. Currently, the public sector is, is receive, the public sector receives small amount of money while the uh, the, 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 what do you call this? The opposite yeah, the of public, medical, what do we call yeah, this? Yeah. Yes, private medical aid is receiving big chunk of money. It means only 16% of the public is receiving from the tax rebates, but the rest is goes to those who are only medical aid. This is big inequality in our country. Hence, mm. with regard to national health insurance, we are looking forward for everybody to access health as and when they need it. We cannot continuously postpone certain conditions of our people because they cannot afford to access those type of care. We need specialists for all our people in the country. So they can't be because I'm so and so, I have a medical aid, then I get all the type of care in the country, but people who belong to this country are excluded from participating. And yet the tax rebates, are for all of us. It doesn't mean if I'm in government, I pay less. So we need to have everybody accessing healthcare. Universal healthcare is here and COVID-19 because everybody is treated the same. We know even now from public sector, the information tells us public is doing even much better compared to the uh, private sector in terms of COVID-19. The government is issuing PPEs to the employees currently. But when you ask people who are working in private sector, the PPEs, they must ensure that they buy for themselves. So you can see that although they've got a lot of generation of revenue, 
but somewhere there is a lack in terms of addressing such issues. These are not verified, but these are the things that are coming from people because we, from health, we receive information every day of people complaining of what's happening in private and also in public. So NHI, we are wishing for it to be here and we are supporting it as a province. Thank you. May, if I can just have a final note and I'll move on. But I do think that one of the things as South Africans and in particular as Gauteng provinces, our residents, we must be resolute on is that we cannot afford a profit-driven privatization of public good. Um, because if you have a profit-driven privatization of, pri yes. of public good, you exclude the majority of the country who happen to be black, happen to be poor, predominantly female, who don't have the resources to access that infrastructure. Who, by the way, health is a public good. The right to life is a right to life. It shouldn't be determined by the size of your bank account. But I'll move on from this point. I'd like to ask uh, Ndade Matsena to join us now. Ndade Matsena, I know that you join us from the perspective of community safety. Now, Re, you and I can both agree broadly that South Africa is suffering this heinous cancer of gender-based violence at the moment. Now, I'm aware that the committee welcomed the development of the provincial gender-based violence response plan. And it was launched this year in March. The plan was intended to enhance and promptly address the third of corona of uh, gender-based violence. And the department plans to develop and pilot a case tracking system with a focus on priority crimes and gender-based cases. If I can ask you, sir, how far are we with this plan and how far are we with the implementation of the tracking system? No, thanks very much, Vos uh, uh, and the team. Let me firstly indicate and, and just to, to go back into the last financial year. Mm -hmm. And I want to demonstrate this uh, issue by means of uh, a, the overall performance. The department has uh, what you call 47, the, the FIT 47 target out of 61. And uh, in terms of the budget, the overall budget, they spend around 98%. Let me just indicate that uh, within that particular budget and even uh, linked to the performance, the, the department uh, and even in terms of implementation of that strategy, the department has spent a lot of money on issues around gender-based violence. Firstly, providing uh, the victims with some support, giving them shelter. Some even went to an extent of assisting even the children and those that were really being affected uh, uh, seriously. We are happy as the committee, uh, uh, based on the current budget, that there is more budget on the on the on the issue of the gender-based violence, uh, and 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 this, in actual fact, uh, is on the basis that they want to the department want to strengthen its intervention, intervention aimed at really ending this uh, this, this, this this problem. But I can tell you, and this is what I want to indicate: we can only be in a position as society to defeat this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, bad uh, activity as society. If all of us, particularly us as men, we can really be in a position to say, indeed, women are also human beings. And in whatever way you treat them, you must treat them in such a way that that should also be taken into consideration. You know very well the current situation and the police together with the department are at the forefront of ensuring that for those who are at, 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 for those who are really engaged into this apartheid uh, activity, those people are really being arrested. And then the, the department is also at the forefront of ensuring that indeed they give support to, to the victims. But where I'm sitting, I'm saying we can really be in a position to defeat 
all this barbaric acts uh, by ensuring that at least any of this uh, gender-based violence is reported to the police. And the police must also be in a position to act swiftly and deal decisively and ensure that for those who deal with this uh, barbaric act are really being taken to, to court and, and get uh, uh, yeah, yeah. life sentence, if, if, if I can put it in that so, way. While I've got your attention, we do know that the department launched uh, Operation Ogai Mulao. Yes. Um, and that that operation focused on crime prevention and reduction. But in that, I wonder, are we spending any time focusing on citizen education as a preemptive measure to reducing crime? What are your thoughts on this? Let, let me say, I think speak. we lost... Uh, now he's here with us. He's here with us. You hear me? You hear me? Yes, you hear me. You hear you. Let, okay. let me tell you, in one of the committee meetings, what we have indicated is that one, we are satisfied about the work done by the department in coordinating and integrating and ensure that this program is Operation Wukaimala is integrated just to include all law enforcement officers. We acknowledge and really give credit to the police. Secondly, as a committee, what we have indicated that it is also very important for us to also monitor not only uh, do or do what is expected from us from that angle of oversight, but also monitor. And I want to give an example, and this is what I've indicated in the past. One, I said, we said, in order for us to fight this crime, we need, we need members of the community to be on our side. We need members of the community to be on our side. And uh, if you know very well in the whole of Houghton, we have already established or relaunched the CPFs. We have relaunched 142 CPFs. And then uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the CPFs where we are sitting, they are playing a major role in assisting the police in terms of ensuring that uh, at least crime, there is an element of reduction of crime. The CPFs are working closely as part of a uh, uh, public uh, interest and public interaction on the issue of uh, uh, crime prevention. And where I'm sitting, we can see it is important for us as members of the committee to support all the structures, community, uh, community policing forum, uh, and, and also the work done by the police. But where I'm sitting, I can tell you that the committee is actively involved in that particular aspect. There might be challenges, Hence, now, the department has, uh, in terms of our own assessment, made serious commitment to say they are now going to professionalize and put a particular amount, the CPF. It is not, it is not only going to be the CPF that we know, where people will go out and use some sort of mob justice. Uh, they are now going to be at the forefront of ensuring that, indeed, they also do what you called educating community uh, about their role in ensuring that they assist police in terms of prevention of crime. I make an example last when I was interviewed. I said, you know, one priest uh, uh, told me, uh, he said to me, you know, South Africa is a more Christian or religious-based uh, society. Uh, but he asked me, what are you doing uh, uh, chairperson, in terms of coming to different churches and mobilize community, mobilize community, and use our churches to mobilize community to also part actively participate in the uh, uh, reduction of crime, because they said the the priest told me that if you go to each and every uh, in a particular area. And, 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 and come to a particular church, you'll see that there are many parents, young, uh, old and young people who are there. If you can come and really be in a position to tell them 
and also make sure that indeed they participate actively uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the crime reduction and also in fight against the crime. But where, where I'm sitting, I know it's a challenge, but uh, at the end, uh, together with the department and as part of our mandate as a committee, we are just going to ensure that indeed community is taken on board as part of our efforts to create a safer housing. Excellent. Ndadamateka, can I come to you now? And you've got quite a wide uh, area of focus because you look after sports, recreation, arts, and culture. And I know that in South Africa, we tend to conflate those, but the, the focus areas are very specific and the disciplines are also quite varied in how they require support. So what I'm going to try to do is to break down those into their component parts. Because I'd like you to just help me understand where we are as a province at this first, as it pertains to the Gauteng Department of Sports, Arts, Rec uh, Culture and Recreation. We are on what is now the budget vote 12 for this 2020-2021 year. The department has aligned its vision, mission and programs, including the Gauteng Film Commission programs to ensure that it responds to transformation, modernization and reindustrialization. Now, there's a question I have for you here, uh, and please bear with me on this, which is the arts, and in particular, the film sector, is, as one of the comments is made by a participant on this, a great opportunity for us to think about how do we create export-worthy products for the rest of the continent. What's the work being done by the Gauteng Film Commission to ensure that the film sector, it's specifically within the arts, is growing, and as it's growing, it's inclusive. And as it's inclusive, it's representative of us and our stories as South Africans broadly and as citizens of Gauteng specifically. Thank, thanks, Bose. Um, you know, with regard to the Gauteng Films Commission, it has, it has been a, a bit of a um, challenge uh, because of the budget allocation that we allocate to the films com uh, to the film commission in the previous financial year we allocated about 37 million and this financial year we allocated about uh, 39 uh, million what we want to achieve is to make sure that uh, the Houghton film commission assists in terms of uh, post production and production um, of films in Houghton uh, the issue uh, film permits uh, for those who want to film within Gauteng. There are quite a number of um, places that we can promote as Gauteng where, where people can be able to film. One of the areas that we have identified is to make sure that we support the Jobek uh, Film Festival to make sure that we attract investors within Gauteng. It's one area that uh, we are supporting the Gauteng Film Commission to make sure that it also assists in terms of uh, uh, part of the TMR of Gauteng on job creation. Because once we can be able to get uh, international filmmakers to invest within uh, the Gauteng province, we'll be able to create job opportunities for our people. But we are also uh, getting the Film Commission to partner with uh, our libraries within the arts and culture uh, to create hubs within um, our libraries in order for our people to access the services that the Gauteng Film Commission is offering to the people of Gauteng. So there are quite a number of uh, programs that the Gauteng Film Commission um, is um, servicing our people in Gauteng. But uh, like I've indicated, the budget allocation is not enough. We have engaged uh, the Gauteng Provincial Treasury to make sure that they increase uh, the budget allocation for the Film Commission. If you can, you can, you can compare what gets um, allocated to the uh, KZN uh, Film Commission, specifically to the Deben Film Commission, and what we allocate as Gauteng to the Gauteng Film Commission, um, it, it's, it's, there's a huge differences. So we are looking at uh, those particular uh, areas to make sure that the budget of the Gauteng Film uh, Commission is increased. Thanks, Jose. Great. Now, if, whilst we're on this, one of the things that you can help me with this that I'm trying and need to understand, 
especially on this, is that the budget allocation for 2020-2021 year is 1 billion odd, which is similar to what it was last year. But last year, it was adjusted from 900, I think, 969 million to 888 million. Of, and of the 969 million, I beg your pardon, only 886 million was spent in the province. How do we ensure that we spend more of the budget that is sitting in the um, arts sector specifically, but broadly with regards to sports, recreation, arts and culture? Well, see, the, the previous uh, budget allocation was uh, 1 billion 58 mi uh, right. million. And you are, quite, you are quite correct to say if you look at the, the current allocation, it's uh, similar to the previous financial year. But during the adjustment, the budget went to 969 million. And it's because of the baseline reduction, because majority of uh, the budget of uh, the department is dependent on conditional grants, uh, both for library services and uh, sports and recreation. So what, what could have happened is that um, uh, during the allocation we were having challenges with regard to infrastructure and i think it's something that i picked up yesterday during the the webinar that you you held yesterday with the infrastructure uh, committee that there are quite a number of uh, outstanding projects with regard to uh, libraries and, and sports and recreation especially on the multi-purpose courts com uh, commonly known as the combi courts now that could have um, affected our bu uh, budget allocation hence you could have realized that um, we allocated almost the same amount of money that we allocated uh, the previous financial year. But in terms of the performance of the department, the department has performed well, but uh, the, the, the difficulty, like I've indicated, was on the, on the infrastructure pro uh, project. Since um, infrastructure uh, projects uh, moved to uh, DID, it has been quite a number of uh, challenges for us to finish uh, some of the infrastructure uh, projects within Gauteng, especially with regard to budget allocation. And um, the 969 million that was allocated, the department um, managed to spend around, around 860 million. Um, the first, second and third quarter, uh, the department did well, but uh, as me and you are aware that um, a majority of um, events within the department, uh, they are based on uh, gatherings. So um, the department was one of the uh, sectors that was uh, hugely affected by the the lockdown. So they could not necessarily perform, hence they could not uh, uh, reach the targets that they could have set in the uh, fourth quarter. But uh, mm -hmm. moving forward, we requested, we have requested the department to reprioritize their budget to look into infrastructure projects. Um, much as like I indicated that uh, in terms of conditional grants, we get the conditional grants for library services. But in terms of infrastructure, with regard to your sports infrastructure, we've got a challenge in terms of HMP Stadium, which um, it was raised yesterday by Honorable Mudise. Yes. Um, where yes, where we feel that um, um, if we if we can be able to get a PP a Triple P to be on board, we'll be able to um, manage that particular stadium. But we want to allocate enough resources for that stadium, uh, that stadium and over and above that, we, you've got two other stadiums that we feel that we need to reallocate budget, like your Bob van Drenen Stadium and your Patrick Patrick Trillen Stadium. The department also introduced something that we call Operation Mabale in West Bend, where we are building sports facilities for our people. So uh, it's one area that we are also looking in, into it. Like you correctly put it, the department is quite broad. We also have um, the heritage monument sec um, uh, sector, where we are dealing with uh, monuments within Gauteng. There is uh, the Bipato monument, there is the Women Living Monument in, in Swan, as well as the Cajiso uh, uh, monument, which uh, the department, we've requested them to really during the adjustment um, process, as like um, outlined by the minister yesterday, that there will still be baseline reduction uh, based on conditional grants. Uh, for us to be able to respond to COVID-19 pandemic. Right, most of the budget yes. has been, yes, most of the budget has been allocated to um, health and, and education, but we still uh, feel as the department that uh, within our own means, within our own um, 
a budget, we can be able to allocate for infrastructure projects within Gauteng. Excellent. So what we've done is we've touched on what are the major bits of conversation as it pertains to this current round of budget votes within the legislature. Um, and, and we've touched on each of those conversation pieces from health to education to community safety, um, arts and culture. I suppose the burning question for many of the citizens of the province who join us in terms of this is, and I want to start, if I can, with this issue of gender-based violence. One of the challenges we have as citizens of the province is that our experience of the province is not driven by department. So if I'm driving on a road and there's a pothole, I'm not, I don't think of it from a departmental issue. If there is a backlog in rolling out infrastructure like housing, I don't think about it from a departmental issue. If I'm trying to access healthcare and there are issues around either the, the quality or the availability of that healthcare, I don't see it from a departmental issue. So I suppose the question I'm asking is this, how do we work together as citizens of the province, together with the legislature and the government in actualizing and delivering a province that is prosperous, that is growing, that is inclusive, and, and that reflects the demographics of the people who live in it. And I'm happy to take questions and uh, or rather comments from any of you on this question. Hello, yeah, thank you. I, I think uh, the accessibility of the public representative is uh, also paramount to the population of Gauteng. Mm. Uh, we receive questions from the public every day. When they phone me about an issue of education, I don't tell them that I'm not from education. I refer the mm. problem to the relevant chairperson. So like me in health, I will receive from everywhere issues of people that are not complying with the rules from business people because my number is available everywhere so i will say even at where my previous place of work they phone they say i have a problem like this like this so we are available we they can communicate with us and we also go to if there was no lockdown we often have got public participation meetings where the committee will have invited people to come together so that we share information mm -hmm. that is that public is also involved in doing things. We also are doing oversight where we invite everybody to come and we go and represent our people. In, Like in health, we will say we are going to this particular area and when we go there, we identify issues and then we address those issues on behalf of the people of Gauteng to the department. Thank you. Yes. Any other comments on this? How do we ensure that we increase participation and the delivery of service? Versus, yeah. You see, one of our mandate, particularly in the legislature, is what you call the uh, uh, public participation, including an oversight work that we are doing. And uh, it's one issue that uh, as legislature, you know, other issues, you know, intergovernmental, uh, uh, and I'm referring to our mandate and, and, and lawmaking process. But the, fun, our, the fundamental, what I can call it as a process is around how do we interact with the community? Because one of the issues which I think, and I want to talk from a, uh, a, a crime's point of view. When we do our oversight, uh, we visit, we go to different police stations. Mm -hmm. and there you will meet the top brass of a police uh, management in that particular police station. Mm -hmm. They will tell you in terms of the uh, uh, performance uh, type of uh, uh, outcome. What did they do from uh, investigation, pre uh, prevention, and so on? But one issue which, in most cases, they will tell you, 
But at the end, you'll get these things from different police stations, which, which uh, I can I can take it as complaining about the the work of the police. Uh, uh, cars to cars are not there, or or maybe when the police are called to for intervention of any crime uh, related scene. The police are, not, uh, are delaying and so on. But when you come to the police station, the police will tell you, will, will, will give you a good story. But in most cases, what we do, we go again to the community. I said, let's go together. And I'm talking about the police, the police management, the provincial commission and so on. They will go to a particular area and maybe call different stakeholders. And I'm not talking about now because of the lockdown type of a process. Uh, when you go there, you'll get a different story, mm-hmm. particularly from the side of the community. And, and in most cases is when the police will come and say, hey, on this issue, we know that indeed there's a challenge. But what I can indicate is that the community there is ready to assist us. And I'm, when I say us, and I'm including myself, and I'm not a policeman, but I think I'm a public rep where we must really be an opportunity to ensure that indeed the public are represented. Community is there to assist us, but we must also be an opportunity to play our ball and ensure that indeed when community are also complaining about a particular aspect of how the police in this case, and I'm giving an example, we must be an opportunity to be at the forefront. And, and like... Uh, May uh, Dr. Dikhamela just indicated on a daily basis. I can tell you, my 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 WhatsApp message, and the provincial commissioner is aware that on, uh, and I can tell you, in an on an hourly basis, I get complaints from all over 142 police stations. Uh, like as I'm talking to you, I was reading a message where 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 where, where people were complaining about the fact that there is one person who was uh, who was at the forefront of committing very serious crime that person uh, is now out on bail but our view is that the community is also at the at, 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 at an active point in ensuring that they also assist us and from our side we must also be at the forefront in terms of ensuring that indeed we respond to whatever they say uh, thanks very much uh, Vose? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, you know, I just want to, I want, I just want to add to uh, what uh, that uh, Matsena could have raised uh, with regard to public participation. There is another part that we, it's part of our responsibility as the legislature, uh, cooperative uh, governance. And, you know, it's high time that we, we, we need to really bring on board uh, municipalities in terms of our oversight work and public participation. You've got uh, section 79 and section 80 committees within uh, local uh, municipalities of which every now and then when we do public participation, we participate in uh, public uh, participation, we invite them to to join to join us and we call upon them to really uh, come on board because of like what uh, Dr. Kamela could have indicated. Uh, how then our population it's um, almost at uh, 15.2 million and you've got an in migration of around 1.6 million not including the Ill- um, illegal immigrants that are currently here and you've got only 73 uh, public office bearers with the responsibility to make sure that they cover the whole entire uh, housing so if we can be able to bring on board uh, the, uh, section, uh, section 79 and section 80 committees to partner with us when we undertake visits to libraries, visits to police stations, visits to to schools, visits uh, visits to to clinics, we'll be able to improve um, part of our public uh, part- participation. Lu- uh, Luanda raised something quite very important earlier uh, when I was looking to questions that were raised about the issue of languages in the legislature. Every now and then, when we have our own public uh, participation sessions, we make sure that we invite. Um, uh, uh, different uh, uh, um, translators in terms of uh, the languages that we we use. We 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 it depends on an area 
that we visit. For an example, if we go to Mahalisbeck and that area, the people speak uh, 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 Setuan, we make sure that there are translators who will translate uh, to our people in their own language. The biggest challenge that we are faced with in terms of public participation is that in most cases, you you uh, you have a session where you are dealing with uh, sports, arts, culture, and recreation. But then you'll have a situation because of, like I've indicated, the number of public office bearers that are there within Gauteng, vis-a-vis the population itself. You have a situation where people that don't necessarily raise issues that relate to uh, sports, arts, and culture uh, challenges. But they will, they will raise a number of issues. They will raise issues that are related to social development, that are related to housing, and the like. And it's one area, as the, as the legislature, I, I feel that we really need to improve um, on it moving forward. Thanks. Oh, oh lastly, uh, Nolutan to raise something about the the pre the pre -pro uh, production in terms of the Houghton Film uh, Commission. I think I'm taking a note, Nolutan, of why, what you are, are raising, and will also raise it with the management of the Houghton Film Commission. That one of the areas where we really need to invest our time and money is on uh, writers and and research for for filmmaking. Thanks. One of the things that you want to do for us. Yeah, maybe let me just uh, add my voice, but I know that uh, my colleagues uh, covered a large space. I would want to come to what I raised earlier uh, when, when I was making an opening remark around a social contract. And I think uh, we must find a way, you know, of really uh, uh, if I could say signing it again with with uh, with, uh, with the people of Houting, because uh, the first thing, if you look at how society generally treats uh, property of government, you know, as a basic, they believe it's not theirs, you know, and and that drives down to the type of contract in place, the social contract in place that there's government and then there's the people of Houting or the people of South Africa, and it's not supposed to be like that. So we need to really find a way of bringing it back, you know, and bring it closer to, to, to home. I mean, for example, recently you would have seen in the news that quite a number of our schools, 313 of our schools in Gauteng were vandalized during the, the lockdown. And, and clearly, you know, it shows you that beside those rogue elements, but uh, the community, oh, obviously we must appreciate the way, the way communities that really did help us to apprehend those who are responsible for some of the schools but in the first place you know a, a, a school is, is belongs to the community it doesn't belong to <clears throat> to government uh, because as soon as you build a school and you end over it then it, it, it takes a life of its own in the lives of the community so in that way th that way the community needs to be able to play a greater role as opposed to just waiting for for government alone to come in uh, and do everything, and 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 that really becomes the core of things, you know, uh, how we relate as public reps, as government, with our with the people of Gauteng is very important, and the type of uh, social contract in place with the people of Gauteng, that really will really that's the main core that I do believe we should be able to structure and get organised in the public participation sector. Because even in these public participation se uh, sessions, obviously you'd want to target, and Honorable Tseka is correct, you find that a person is an education public sector meeting, but you are asked by, you are asked of housing, you know, uh, and, and really that shows that uh, they sometimes perhaps are not reaching the correct uh, constituency or, you know, we, we are unable to be really uh, in touch with the pertinent issues that are, are affecting the communities that would be holding those meetings. But uh, besides that, I think uh, obviously the honorable members did uh, uh, cover a large space. Uh, so social contract, if we get it right, I can tell you, then everybody will play a role. Yeah. Excellent. There's one question that I'd like to take from the chats and it's Bong Gamtembu. He asks, he says, I wish to ask a question. Um, uh, that uh, and he says, is our MPL aware that the closing of the SAPS satellite office in Bupilong, which causes problems? Now I do know, and in particular, I've read this read this in the pack about community safety that mobile uh, police stations is one of the big drives for the province. 
It says, my grandmother always reminds me um, that there were that there are police. The police station was closed due to COVID-19 pandemic threat. It's been two weeks now. And it says, please intervene because the crime is increasing. How do citizens, when they're facing these kind of immediate issues, engage with the province around this? Thanks, Vos. Uh, I think uh, in, 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 in your, in your uh, preamble, uh, you indicated that uh, the department is now in the process of driving this uh, process to procure mobile police station. Uh, I think two weeks back, uh, when the department uh, in the in the in the fourth quarter report explained to us the fact that they are in the process of ensuring that at least we've got more but more more mobile police station and i'm not talking about the kiosk uh, we we know that uh, and they indicated that there is one in mamelodi as the committee and as part of our of our oversight responsibility i went there just to see this mobile police station uh, and indeed, uh, I, f I also found that mobile police station right at the operation. It was on a Moloto road. Well, I can tell you we're really satisfied. Uh, the fact that indeed, if we can really, and, and, and the department procure, in terms of the current, uh, the approved budget, they are going to procure 12. And I'm talking about a fully fleshed, and resourced mobile police station, not the kiosk, one room and so on. <laughs> uh, now it's 12, and I think it is uh, 108 million, uh, 108 million, which has been budget, budgeted for that purpose. But it's not only budget the structure, budget for the purpose of the structure. It should be resourced. Where mm. we are, and this is what we are telling this is what we have indicated and i want to give an example of what we have just given me is that this mobile police station in most cases we find that from a human resource point of view is not resourced mm. uh, because they are shortest of staff in that particular police station mm -hmm. as we are aware that recently there are there is an increase of uh, the, the, there is an intake which took place as a result of those uh, who came from the, the, the police who came from training. And I think uh, as we are procuring all those services, we must also be in a position to say, indeed, this must be men. Uh, and, and in some instances, like for example, the one that I'm referring to in Mamelodi East, it was only, it operated from eight to four. It operates from eight to four, but our view is that it must be 24 hours. And hence I'm saying it should be resourced. But the most important thing is that we have got areas where you know the, the, the different areas are growing in terms of your info, informal settlement and, 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 and so on. But we find that indeed we don't have a, 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 a police station to cater. People who come from as far as uh, areas uh, within that particular uh, police uh, uh, process. But what I can indicate to you is that we were happy because uh, the department has committed itself to ensure that at least they increase the number of mobile police stations. Uh, and they've put an amount in order to ensure that indeed we deal with this issue. But uh, the issue of resources in terms of ensuring that we've got more police is also a challenge, but uh, the provincial commissioner uh, committed himself to say they are going to ensure that indeed those mobile police stations are really going to be manned. Thanks very much. Thank you. As, as we draw our conversation to a close, it's pretty clear that there's a lot of work ahead for us in terms of building an inclusive province, an engaged province, a prosperous province. I want to I want to close with this comment, and then I'd like for each of you to give me your closing comments. My reading of Haute is is that it isn't that there aren't dedicated civil servants doing good work. 
It isn't that there isn't oversight. It isn't that there aren't resources. My assessment, and it's just my assessment, I'm happy to be wrong, is that it appears to me that the issue around Gauteng in the main is that the speed at which the problem we are trying to solve for is changing is faster than the speed at which we can come up with solutions and then implement those solutions. And that's in the main around the fact that by its nature, government is driven by law, regulation, legislation, and oversight, which tends to slow things down. I'd love to get your closing comments and thoughts around how do we speed up service delivery to each of the residents of the province? Um, and I'd like to start first with you, Mehdi Khamela. I think uh, we uh, we speed the service delivery through public participation as we are receiving comments. Now we've got fourth industrial revolution that is being used. Like we are now in this platform now, so it is very important for our communities to also raise issues that will also enhance, and we need to bring in people with skills, like we recently received people that are involving technocrat from Cuba. They will also assist the department to ensure that certain things can be done speedily in which way because they do have those skills. I think uh, the fourth industrial revolution is pushing us to do things differently. Now the model that is brought about by COVID-19 that is used by Department of Health nationally, where the minister is reporting every day, it is doable in the province that we can adopt that model and use it so that we can track how far we are going so that we abolish these uh, red tapes that are delaying. Because, I mean, if there was a budget that is already implemented of 500 billion that was announced by the president, Nothing can stop us because we can do things better. And I think we are ready. We just need to come together and see how we implement using that model. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and Dada Chelwane? Uh, thank you. Um, on the side of education, um, uh, we, I, we would want to find yourself in a situation where we, we have really, we have to take advantage of what the pandemic has brought and uh, it has ushered us into that for IR you are talking about. Uh, an environment where uh, for us every land, is a, an environment where every school must, must have connectivity, an environment where Learning, does, learning and teaching doesn't end between end eight o'clock and uh, and one o'clock or two o'clock. Uh, you know, uh, an environment where uh, uh, the safety in our schools, an environment where our child children get to a point where they compete with the rest of the world. You know, an environment where a, a grade twelve a matriculant once they finish they don't just have a metric certificate. And that's what has been uh, uh, happening now in counting of late with the, with the, with the, with the schools of specialization uh, and, uh, and, and also having a multi-certificated learner in between uh, grade seven learning to, uh, skills such as, such as uh, how to fix elevators, uh, grade, uh, grade R1 and two and three, teaching them how to code and that is the type of uh, uh, learner that we want. And, and really then we'll be preparing our country for the future. Yeah, that's what, what, that's what we want to, to see happen. And then I must say, we are on the right track. Uh, we just need to speed it up because the time is now. Dr. Macheke? Thanks, thanks, Bravosi. Uh, taking from what uh, Honorable Khamela Kulev indicated um, a capable state needs capable people. I think this is in line to what uh, Mr. Twala is raising. Uh, 
with regard to us attracting qualified people in terms of our sectors. I mean, he makes uh, quite an important issue to say we develop uh, infrastructure for basketball courts, but it ends up being used for, for soccer instead of uh, uh, what it was meant, meant for. It's because of uh, we really need to start uh, attracting capable people in our um, uh, departments. Um, we really need to move with time, uh, like uh, other members would have indicated. We're in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, it will never be business as usual in the world moving forward. We, we need to embrace uh, the new normal. And by doing that, we also need to balance uh, between making sure that uh, the province attracts people with skill, but not only people who, uh, with skill, but people who are really capable to make sure that uh, we transform our state. And, and that's the only way we can be able to really improve. Like I earlier indicated as well, uh, Vosin, the issue of uh, public participation uh, with uh, corporate uh, governance. It's one of one area that we really need to to improve. Uh, there are three spheres of uh, government. Um, we need to use local government uh, as part of our uh, 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 colleagues. It must not be uh, used as by the way. Uh, they've got a role to play in making sure that uh, we build Houten together moving forward. And like what the uh, chairperson Matome could have indicated, we are doing well as Houten and we are capable to do more. But if we can all of us work together, we can be able to do far better than what we are doing now. Thanks, first. Thank you, sir. Dada Matena, you have the last word. Yes, yes, yes. You know, in addition to capable people, people with capacity, I think I want to add one aspect, commitment to serve. Commitment to serve is very, very important. Both us as public reps and both and, and those that are really assisting us uh, and I'm talking about the, those professionals, those academic, those people who are doing day-to-day -day work. And in this case, I'm talking about the police. If you have got committed police in South Africa, in Houghton in particular, and where I'm sitting, I'm saying we've got men in, uh, in, 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 in blue and women who are really committed. And I think they will assist us in ensuring that indeed we reduce crime. And I can tell you that, uh, that when we go out and do what we call an oversight, when we go out together with the police and go to the community and address issues of crime, in most cases, members of the public, they will also indicate that we want to applaud and also acknowledge the work done by the police. In, in protecting us. But in some instances, they will say, no, 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 no. These are complaints uh, against the police. And I'm happy because we have got a capable uh, provincial commit commissioner who committed himself to say, indeed, he's going to make sure that each and every policeman who is on the street, he does what is expected from him or her. And, and, and lastly, our crime prevention and also fight against crime also depend on those that are doing prosecution commitment because if we if policemen like uh, when we get a report uh, is that police during the lockdown process uh, contravention of the regulation they've arrested almost 52,000 people who contravene but when you come to a level of prosecution uh, close to 11,000 cases were withdrawn. And, and the commitment of the police in terms in, in ensuring that indeed we deal with uh, people who are contravening the law. And that commit, commit is discouraged by that aspect of withdrawing the case. And, and there, are, there are factors that I want to get. But I'm happy because now we are going to have a multi-type of a task team even from the level of uh, police, uh, those who are investigating and prosecution. So that even all this DBV type of a crime that are really at this juncture is, is a serious problem. We can't, we must really be in a position to say, indeed, even from the level of prosecution, there is commitment 
there's commitment to ensure that at least we deal with all those those people who act barbatical, those people who act uh, inhuman. Uh, and when we are saying they must face the might of the law, it should be indeed they must do that. And all of us who must be committed. And as I'm saying, commitment to serve is, 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 is the most important uh, aspect of ensuring that we've got a, 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 a better service delivery and a better life for all. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you, everybody, for having joined us in this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. To the remaining 40 citizens who were part of this conversation all the way through to the end, thank you. Thank you, all of you, for having joined us, honorable MPLs. Have a pleasant evening. And to the, to the citizens of the province, let's go and make Gauteng great again. Thank you, everybody.